Souvenir from the war, Monsieur le Capitaine? No, just personal. Take it down with the rest. It goes to New Orleans. I'd like to thank you for your hospitality, Captain. Uh, anxious to get home, sir? Well, after four years away from New Orleans. <laughs> four years and a good cause. We're all mighty proud of the Louisiana Volunteers. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure serving under a man like General Sam Houston. Texas is a fine place. Except for one thing. Hmm? It doesn't have New Orleans in it. <laughs> Are the horses off yet? Any minute. You're in for a hot, dusty ride, though. Why not stay aboard? We'll have you home by 11 tonight. Thank you very much. While you're still on the river, I'll be having dinner with my father. I'd better go check on the horses. <laughs> How are they behaving, William? Just fine, Captain. They're taking a real fancy this here water trail. <laughs> Why is the good left out? Mr. Banjo, come in, it's all so long. Chapo, sick, say, Mr. Banjo, look like at the my compliments, ma'am. That was magnificent. Thank you, monsieur. I think so, too. Miss Melody? Yes, Josh. Come see, it's time to go ashore. Two hundred and raise you five. A call. Two pairs. Names and aces. Beats me. It's <laughs> time we were leaving the air. The horses are ready. I've never seen such luck. I'm in up to my neck. All the more reason to get out. One more hand. I gotta try to recoup. There's just enough of. If only my luck would change. Well, don't force it. Maybe you can change it, Vance. Sit in for me on the last one. Well, it's been too long, Pierre. You know that. Well, just this last one. That is, if Mr. Gottwald doesn't mind. Mind? <laughs> it says funeral. All right. A new deck, Captain. Five cards, Ted. I'll call $200. Second deuce. Huh, and a queen for me. Well, what do you say, Captain? I say $100, Mr. Godwall. $100 on a pair of deuces against an ace high state? Huh. All right. It's your 100 And I raise you 400 I suggest that you save your friend's money. You're bluffing, sir. I'd raise you from here to doomsday if I had the time. 
Instead, I'll just call. A seven. That's a long way from an eight. Now, can we go? By all means. down. It's burning your mind. You don't have to look at it. But if you haven't got it, you have to keep looking at it to see what you do have. Simple. Who is he? Vance Colby. The game's in his blood. Haven't you heard of his father? Chip Colby? And you let me play against the son of that, that crooked gambler? I'd tone it down if I were you, Mr. Godwald. Chip Colby's one of the few honest gamblers left on the Mississippi. His son wouldn't like you to think otherwise. I'll think what I please. And I'll say what I please. Captain! You should have told me a little about yourself. I let the guards do the talk. If I'd known that your friend was a professional gambler... He's not a gambler at all. He's a soldier and a gentleman. Gentleman? Ah, like his father? What about my father? If I'd known that you learned to play from him, I'd have examined the deck first. Fine job. It should be a fine job. I was going to exchange it because it is too light. I think I am wrong. I can't tell you how grateful I am. You took a great risk. May I ask why? Because I see you have a beautiful head, and I do not want it to break it. You not only have a great deal of courage, you got a good taste in heads. Such qualities must be rewarded. With my compliments, ma'am. I cannot take money from a man unless we are married. I will wait. <laughs> Good day. Melody, what did that fine soldier give you, money? No, Papa. Something better than money. Oh, save your dreaming for night. It is now day. We must shop, little one, and then start the boat down river. It's nice to have your company, Pierre. But I can't understand why my father wanted you to chaperone me all the way from Baton Rouge. I'm not a chaperone, Vance. I'm your father's attorney. When he heard you were being mustered out of the army, he wanted to be sure you came directly to New Orleans. He had a reason, which I can't seem to pry out of, simply because I wasn't told. But I have my suspicions. You'll know soon enough. Well... We have company. Well, what are we waiting for? Yvette! What a pleasant surprise. For 
permit me to present my friend, Captain Vance Colby. Vance, Mademoiselle Yvette Rivage of Araby. And the reason no eligible bachelor ever leaves New Orleans. Pierre exaggerates, Captain Colby. After all, you left New Orleans. That was before I had the pleasure of meeting you, ma'am. I see you're in trouble. Oh, one of the horses has gone lame, and I'm afraid I'll be hours getting home. Not at all. Boy. Yes, sir. Put the harness on this horse. Hook him to the carriage. Oh, no, Captain, you mustn't. Well, how will you ride? With you, ma'am. And put my saddle with the luggage. Well, Pierre, I'll see you in New Orleans. But I promised your father I'd come all the way, Pierre. You're not a chaperone, you know. <laughs> I'll leave you in good hands, Yvette. My regards to your brother. Don't let that horse move around much. I'll send a wagon back for you. Yes, sir. This is the way a man should come back from the war. After four years in Texas, with nothing to look at but horses and men. Nothing but horses? And men. For four years? For four long years. Oh! Pull up, boy. Stop up. Drive on. Keep it slow. Yes, sir. Keep it fast. Keep it slow. Keep it fast. Mm -hmm. Get in. Why are you in such a hurry to get back to Araby? Is the storm frightening? The lady doesn't write about the countryside with strangers. Oh, but perhaps sometimes when the situation gets beyond her control... A lady doesn't allow a situation to get beyond her control. I see. You live in a make-believe world where you're a princess, and Araby is your castle. It's a world of gentlemen, Captain. And if I belong to that world, I bow politely and step outside. Well, this is a real world, and it's wet out there. Oh! That was inexcusable. Maybe I'd better tell him to slow down a bit. No. Oh! oh! Did it rain much in Texas? It was never like this in Texas. Don't <laughs> 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 <I'm so sorry. laughs> You could tell her to go a little slow. <laughs> no, I like it this way. <laughs> Chandra's been powerful work. <laughs> he needn't have been. You will come in, won't you? I'm sure my brother will want to thank you. I'd be delighted to give him the opportunity. Yvette, my chair. What have you been up to? Poor Claude has been out of his mind with worry. Only two bottles of my best brandy prevented him from braving the storm to search for you. What on earth delayed you? Oh, one of the horses went lame. We waited for hours, but... Why, then the captain came along with Pierre Bonnet and kindly loaned me his horse. Captain Colby, my brother, Monsieur André Rivage. I'm deeply indebted to you, Monsieur. And I am indebted to you, sir, for having such a lovely sister. Hmm. You will stay for dinner, of course. Oh, yes. Please do. I'm sorry, but I have another engagement in town. Oh. Oh. With my father. Oh. Ah. Then a drink, at least, until your horse is ready. <laughs> I'd be happy to. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll change and... Join you later. Oh, Andre. As soon as Mark has eaten, send him with a wagon to pick up Lash and the other horse. Of course, my dear. 
My sister seems quite taken with you, Captain. Some men have a way with women. In contrast to which, I give you Monsieur Claude Saint-Germain, the tragic victim of unrequited love, the perpetual suitor. And here, Claude, we have a gentleman who has come to Yvette's rescue. Captain um, Colby. Colby. I'm grateful, Captain, for your attentions to Mademoiselle Rivage. <laughs> I can assure you, sir, the pleasure was all mine. I assume an army man prefers whiskey to wine, Captain. I'm afraid my tastes have been corrupted. Whiskey, please. It's very handsome. Interested in riverboats, Captain? <laughs> my family has been. That's the Baton Rouge, new queen of the Mississippi, a floating palace. Is it yours? With two partners. Claude, here's one of them. Cost us a pretty penny, didn't she, Claude? We're launching her on the 10th. Well, then, here's to the Baton Rouge. May her life be a long and a prosperous one. You know, I have a strange feeling that we've met before. But I can't place where. Oh? Colby? Colby. You're probably thinking of that gambler at the saint Cyr Casino. Chip Colby, good heavens no. I apologize for Claude, monsieur. No relation of yours, of course. I have the honor of being his son. I didn't know he had a son. But now that you mention it, I can see the resemblance. I've often watched him gambling at the saint Cyr. Very impressive, I must say, wearing those diamond chips, cufflinks, studs, and all that. Very impressive. Quite a, a lucky player, I must say. He's quite a scientific player, monsieur. Yes. Yes, of course. Yes, very. Monsieur Andre, the gentleman's horse is ready. Oh, you're leaving so soon. I'm sorry to rush out. My father's a very busy man. As your brother will no doubt explain, professional gamblers have little time. Gambler? One of the finest. Good day, sir. Au revoir, princess. You have a talent, my dear, for the strangest people. I don't expect to ever see him again. You won't. That I promise you. Etienne. Don't move. Just stand there. Stop shaking. Not bad. I have some business for you tonight, Etienne. Business? Yes. You'll need this.
You find anything? Can't find that, boss. Not but read. His pulse is strong. There was no blood on his lips. The knife missed his heart and lungs. We must pull it out, but slowly, so there will be no bleeding. That's the strongest man on the river, Captain. I'll pull it out, slow and easy. All right, Josh. to be near in case he needs me. Melanie, come here. Our captain has a well-known father, Chip Colby, the gambler. Oh, then, then he is not a fine gentleman after all. His father is a gambler just like mine. Oh, I'm so happy. Well, we'll meet again. A little girl from Wheeler's Landing. I have not been a little girl for some time. I'm sorry. I should have noticed. Last I remember is the dugout on the river. How did I get here? Papa and George brought you. Now you must eat or you will not be well. Uh, bonjour, bonjour. How is the wounded soldier this morning, eh? I owe you my life, Captain. Oh, you owe me nothing. Melanie has the eye for men. She saw you floating past and jumped in the river after you. Oh, that makes it twice. Once more and you have permanent possession. I will wait. 
My name is Colby. As we know, we went through your pockets. Well, just to save your effects. Everything was wet, even the money. Melanie hung it up to dry. We have great respect for money on this boat, since we don't get royal flushes every day. Oh? Are you a gambler? Only a very little gambler. My patrons are the swampers along the river. Permit me, I am Captain Antoine Barbet. It's a privilege to have you aboard. <laughs> Why a privilege? Once when I was new on the river, there was a gambler from Natchez. A man who wore diamond chips. He saved me from losing this boat to a card shop. I don't think your father would remember it, but I shall never forget. Shall we eat, Captain? Melanie, some more eggs. This tells us nothing, except that the owner's name begins with E. Well, maybe somebody tried to rob you. After you left the Mississippi Queen, did you stop any place? Did anybody see your money? I made one stop. There was no house of thieves. Where was that? The Araby Plantation. I delivered Mademoiselle Rivage to her brother. They're snobs that I think quite harmless. Oh. Or don't you agree? It's not for me to say. I know them only by reputation. And what is their reputation? Henri Rivage is undependable. His IOUs blanket New Orleans like a snowfall. And his sister? I've heard that Mademoiselle Rivage is very beautiful. She's more than beautiful, my friend. She's breathtaking. Well, yes. I must be getting us underway. Today is payday for the swampers along the river. We have many stops to make. There's only one stop I'm interested in, Captain. You just rest. I'll have you in New Orleans by this afternoon. Now, here is really a beautiful head. My father will be pleased to hear that. He's quite vain, you know. Oh, is that why he wears the diamond chips? No. No, that's sediment. It was part of a necklace worn by my mother. Oh. I'm sorry, Captain. Uh, this boat's loaded with captains. My name is Vance. All right, Vance. And uh, I have a name, too, you know. Yes, I know. Melanie. It's a lovely name. I, um, I managed to get the blood stains out of your shirt. I'm afraid the mending is not too good, is it? It's perfect. Is there no limit to your talent, Melanie? Fish a man out of the river, dry out his money, patch up his wounds. <laughs> what more can a man want? And someday when you find the man you want, you send him to me. I'll tell him how lucky he is. You will not have to tell him. He will know. Here's your TV I'd like to see Monsieur Colby. That's Monsieur Chip Colby. I'm his son. Why, yes, of course. Uh, there have been so many people. Well, what's his suite number? Uh, Fifteen, Monsieur. I'll get a boy. Never mind. He's expecting me. Il a son fils. Quel retour malheur. I'd like to see Monsieur Colby. 
Wait in there, monsieur. Yes? I can only repeat, Captain Colby, I deeply regret your father's death. There is very little I can add to what you already know. But what do I know? Nothing. It was a card game, a duel, he was shot by a Creole gentleman. Why was he challenged? He was not challenged. He was accused of cheating. Accused of cheating? By whom? The affair is closed. Who did it? Monsieur André Rivage. André Rivage? I feel sorry, but it was inevitable. Your father always faced the risk of violence. Gambling is a dangerous profession. It's not half as dangerous a profession as murder, my friend. Murder, Capitaine. It was not murder. It was justifiable homicide. The evidence was clear cut. Here are the cars your father was using. You will notice it's a marked deck. The sides of the aces have been shaved. The pictures and tens have small preparation. I know it's a marked deck, all right. It's not my father. He never cheated in his life. Your father was found with the deck in his hand. There were witnesses. Name them. I shall be very glad to do so. I have them here on the report. Monsieur Claude Saint-Germain, for one, a gentleman of unquestionable integrity and a close friend of Henri Rivage. Who else? Monsieur Nicolas Cadiz, proprietor of the Saint-Cyr Casino. A gentleman who is entirely devoid of honesty and character. Who would manufacture any evidence in the world for the protection of a wealthy client. Who else? We cannot disregard the will of André Rivage himself. André Rivage. A killer lying to save his own neck. I'd like to know the name of just one disinterested party. Just one. René Garon, a waiter who undoubtedly works at the St. Cyr and depends on Cadiz for his living. It would seem, Monsieur Renard, being a member of the Creole gentry is far more important than the integrity of your witnesses. Good day, sir. Mon Capitaine. If you have any intention of challenging these gentlemen to duels, I must warn you to refrain. And should one of these gentlemen challenge me, then what? In that case, you had better have reputable witnesses that you were the challenged party. I assure you, I wouldn't dream of insulting the gentry except before the most reputable witnesses. Vance, I beg of you, don't go on with this. You've done all you can. I've done nothing yet. Stay out of trouble, Vance. Be what your father wanted you to be, a gentleman. A gentleman? Like Henri Rivage? Or a man, like he was. We're hired for the evening, sir. I'll be waiting, monsieur. Monsieur, what table did Chip Colby have when he came here? His table? Why, uh, over there. Then I'll take it. Of course, Monsieur. Regarde, do you see what I see? That must be Chip Colby's son. I heard he was coming back. If I were Andre Rivage, I would stay close to Arabi. Oh, Georges. Bonsoir, monsieur. Bonsoir. Have you always waited on this table? Oh, oui, monsieur. Do you know who I am? Of course. Then would you bring me a bottle of my father's favorite wine? Chateau Elysée, 67. And two glasses. Très bien, monsieur.
He's down there. I just saw him. Vance Colby. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. I saw Dion and André got rid of him. Etienne said he was dead. <laughs> Is René Garon on duty this evening? René Garon? Oui, monsieur. Send him to me. At once, monsieur. Now what are we going to do? You're going to stay up here. I'll keep an eye on him. I am René Garon, monsieur. And I am Chip Colby's son. Oui, monsieur. I believe you were present when my father was murdered. You were a witness. I am only a waiter, monsieur. You saw what happened. I want to know what you saw, not what you told the police. But you are wrong, monsieur. What I told the police was... Can I be of help, monsieur? Are you complaining about the service? Uh, this one is not your proper way. Back to your table, Swelling. I am Nicolai Cadiz, proprietor of the casino. If you have any complaint... There are no complaints. Only a question. After my father was killed, there was a marked deck found on the table. How much did you charge Henri Rivage for that favor? Of course, you're joking, monsieur. But for me, this is no laughing matter. I assure you, I would never do such a thing to your father. Never. He was my good friend. Well, you're wrong, Cadiz. My father was only a customer, nothing more. You have no friends. Colby. I'd like a few more words with you in private. No, no, please, sir. I'm afraid I must insist. Get into the carriage. Right. Quickly. will kill me. And if you don't talk, I'll kill you. You're in a predicament, my friend. But there's a way out. You tell the truth. In a few days, Captain Barbie will take you up the river. And I'll put $500 in your pocket. $500? Enough to start a new life. And a chance for a much longer one. Upstairs, in private room eight. They were playing 21. Who was playing? Two of them. Your father there, Monsieur Claude Saint Germain, sitting watching there. And Monsieur Andre Rivage here. Monsieur Rivage was very angry. Why? Because he had lost the boat to your father. The boat? The new Baton Rouge. He had to win it back. He demanded one more hand. He wagered Araby against the boat. Your father did not want to play for such stakes, but Rivage insisted. Then he took the cards. Rivage dealt. The first one down to your father, one to himself at ten. Then the next one. Your father asked for another card. Your father said, I will stand. Rivage had 16. He chose to take another one. It was a tray that gave him 19. He was confident. He said, I will pay 20. And my father had 20. That's right. He had 20 and he had Araby. Rivage went insane. 
He reached into his pocket, pulled out a pistol and shot across the table. Your father fell, dead. Then Rivage sent me to get Cadiz. And that was when Cadiz switched the cards to the marked deck? Yes, monsieur. And then he put them in your father's hand. For how much? Well, but for himself, monsieur. He wanted to win the boat back, too. He was a partner in it with Saint-Germain, Rivage, and with your father. My father? Your father was part owner. They all built it together. So that was his surprise. A legitimate business for both of us. Ah, that is why they disagreed over the legitimate part. The others wanted to make it a gambling boat fixed for the house. So they tried to win your father's share from him, but instead they lost theirs. I see. In the morning, I'll bring a notary who will take a full statement. In the meantime, can you keep Renee locked in here? I will do it. Thank you, my friend. I think you will sleep easier tonight, my friend. Not get out. Someone got in. Find Vance. Uh, is Mademoiselle alone? I'm waiting for someone. Or oh, perhaps it is I. Never before have I seen such beauty. Then you should see my children, monsieur. How many are there now, my dear? I always forget. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Cinq? Pardon, madame, pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see me? Is it Renee? He's gone. His door was open this morning. Papa says the lock was picked from the outside. I must have been followed. Papa and I can be witness for you. We heard him confess. It wouldn't do any good. Those fine Creole gentlemen wouldn't believe him. Thanks, anyway. You run on back to the boat, and I'll see you later. And where do you go? I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. If you're planning to see her, you may as well tell me. Her? She is more than merely beautiful, Captain Barbie. She is breathtaking. Oh, I'm not going to make a trip to Harrogate. No, but a trip down the corridor, that is possible. Just a moment. I don't believe I understand. You'll have to explain it. I come here to see you. I ask at the desk. Monsieur Colby, suite 15. So I wait. Then I think, why does he pick this hotel? Aha, I say to myself. Look, I picked this hotel because it's where my father stayed. <laughs> I go back to the desk. Can you please tell me the number of Mademoiselle Rivage suite? What, of course. Mademoiselle Rivage is in 17. I don't know anything about... 17? Melanie, I can't thank you enough. She's asleep, monsieur. You can't disturb her. I've never known a woman to look good in the morning. Until now. Will you leave? Or shall I have you put out? Your brother found a more effective way to get rid of a Colby. Or didn't you know? I didn't. Until after you'd left Araby. I was shocked to hear it. Yes, I had somewhat of a shock myself after I left Araby. 
recognize this. It's Ed Jim's. He's the overseer at our plantation. Where did you find it? In my bag. Colby intends to kill me? Did he say why? Well, for one thing, he said you'd try to kill him. Claude, have we tried to kill anyone lately? He gave me this. Etienne's knife. Oh, the poor devil's been looking everywhere for it. He thought that someone had stolen it. How did Colby get it? Why, well, he said he was stabbed with it and that you had ordered Etienne to... My dear, surely you don't believe such a tale? Sweet. Your brother may disappoint you in many things, but he is still a gentleman. Or don't you think so? Oh, I'm sorry, Andre. I never should have listened to him. That's better. But promise me that you'll stay away from Colby. I'm afraid. Don't worry your pretty little head. It'll be no trouble at all. Willie, Claude. I hate to bother you at this hour, Monsieur Renard, but he will be out to dinner, and you can't search his room in peace. You really think Colby would be foolish enough to do such a thing? He was the last person seen with Renée. Ah, Monsieur Rivage. Good evening, Paul. May I trouble you for the key to my sister's suite? Of course. The key to 17, please. There you are. Merci bien. Uh, follow me upstairs. Good evening, monsieur. Oh, good evening, monsieur Colby. I was just stopping by to see you. Well, I'm honored. But to what do I owe this pleasure? It concerns the disappearance of one of monsieur Cadiz's waiters. May we speak to you in your room? By all means. I'm interested in the disappearance myself. Andre. My kerchief, I left it on the chair. Forget it. But it has my monogram on it. Then go and get it, you fool. And hurry!
Mackenzie, it's the most beautiful gun I've ever seen. What you shouldn't have done. Perhaps we'd better take it back. No, you think I'm crazy? I'd better not answer that. <laughs> oh, it is beautiful, Vance. Why did you do it? Well, no reason. All you did was save my life a couple of times. That is the only reason. And besides, you're leaving. Call it a going away present. You mean you are so happy that I'm leaving? You buy me a present? I'm not happy you're leaving at all. As a matter of fact, I was hoping to get you to stay. That's why I asked your father to meet me. Oh, Vance, you, you think he will say yes? We'll ask him and see. Good morning, Captain. Good morning, Father. Uh, bonjour, Vance. Just reading about a friend of yours. Monsieur Saint-Germain has had a terrible accident. He was killed in a fall. Did you know? I knew. It was an accident? And nothing more. There will be more accidents, perhaps? Perhaps. Ask him the question. Papa Vance has a question to ask him. Yes. Captain, have you ever gambled at the St. Cyr Casino? That is the question. Hush, my pigeon. But I thought... Melody! The Saint Cyr. Uh, mais non. I'm too poor. We have always been poor since Mama died and we lost the coffee plantation in Madagascar. Coffee plantation, huh? Uh, we oui. in Madagascar. We oui, that was many years ago. Might work. <laughs> Might work, Captain. Would you stay over another week and help me out? A week, a year for the son of Chip Colby, of course. A hey, little one. To me, it makes not the slightest difference. friend Paul has brought us a fat pigeon, a big time coffee grower from Madagascar. He has taken a presidential suite at hotel. Mm -hmm. Paul says he seems to have nothing but money. Too bad we have to be careful. The gambling commissioner is downstairs. I'm not interested in Monsieur Le Clerc. He's stupid and blind. But I'm about to become extremely interested in coffee from Madagascar. Oh, I know I shall enjoy this. I am sure you will. I'm not staying. Good evening, Paul. Monsieur Cadiz, may I present Monsieur Barbi, a visitor to our city? Welcome to the saint -Cyr, Monsieur. Interesting place you have here. Thank not you. as large as those I've seen at Monte Carlo, Madrid, or London, but interesting. And entirely at your disposal. Uh, what is your pleasure, sir? Pyro, roulette, or possibly 21? I always find I lose less than 21. <laughs> of course, Monsieur would prefer a private room away from all this. Oh, definitely not. As you wish. This way, you please. Uh, I like all this. The noise and the color. I like to study the types. Whether I win or lose is of no consequence. I've laid aside half a million on this trip for just such little trifles as this. <laughs> My only wish is to enjoy myself. Monsieur is an artist. Ah, merci, monsieur. You uh, have a house limit, monsieur? Only when you have won the casino. Or when you have won my coffee plantations, <laughs> eh? <laughs> thank you, no, thank you. Todd? Come on, take it. Todd's Standing. Pay 19. Ah! That's part of your casino, monsieur. <laughs> Perhaps New Orleans would be lucky for me. Compliments of ours. Ah, merci, monsieur. Monsieur, you mind if I join you? Ah, by all means. We have a splendid dealer. <laughs> Place your bets, monsieur. Of such a bet. Excuse me. Do I have the pleasure of addressing Monsieur Leclerc? Why, yes. Perhaps you won't remember me. My father introduced us many years ago. I'm Vance Colby. Why, of course. I was very sorry to hear about your father. Maybe we could have a drink together later on. Delighted. Thank you very much. I haven't seen that boy since it was about that time. Excuse me. We will you. Brandy Napoleon, please. Yes, sir. Not playing, Monsieur Colby? Will do you well to relax. I think there'll be time enough to relax later. Well. 
Day 20. Ah, I win again. <laughs> For you, my friend. Ah, merci, monsieur. Tonight I hold the devil's own cards. Monsieur would like a new deck? Why not? My luck couldn't be any worse. Place your bets, monsieur. Five thousand. One thousand. I shall now bet 10,000. Let me have another card. Enough. Standing. I demand a cut. As you wish, monsieur. What do you want? Not so fast, my friend. What do you mean? I mean, I intend to examine these cards at the request of the commissioner. Anything wrong, commissioner? Monsieur Colby is of the opinion this table is using marked cards. Marked cards? At the Saint Cyr? Impossible. Then evidently the impossible has happened. The edges of the aces have been shaved. The pictures are marked with tiny perforations at the top. I'll show you. Would you cut the cards, Commissioner? An ace. Picture. And another picture. And another ace. It's really quite simple. I did not expect to be cheated at the Sassier. And how much money did you lose, sir? Fifteen thousand. Your money will be refunded at once. All money lost by patrons this evening must be instantly refunded, Monsieur Cadiz. I'm revoking your gambling license and closing this establishment. I lost over a thousand. I lost two thousand. I'll kill you for this. I'd be delighted to give you the opportunity, sir. The dueling hopes are dawn. Pistols. I mean, I say, I ah, they're here. And remember, little one, stay inside. Friends, I... Be very careful. Bonjour, Dr. Rodin. Monsieur Colby. Well, Cadiz, you still have your confidence? My bullet will speak for me. And I'll wager your bullet doesn't harm me. My entire inheritance of $50,000 against your half of the Baton Rouge. Survivor takes all. Done. My second has the contracts ready. Would you be kind enough to hold the stakes, Doctor? Very well.
Monsieur, you will walk ten paces, stop, and wait for my count. Turn when I say one. Aim when I say two. Fire at the count of three, or any time after the count of three. Are you ready? Walk. One, two, three. Monsieur Cadiz, do not move until Monsieur Colby has fired. Garvey, you've got to shoot. It's my privilege to shoot when I please. And when I do, I'll kill you. But I'd rather not. If you'll sign a confession telling the truth about my father's death. All right. I'll do it. I told you. You're hurt. My barber does more damage every week. You bring me luck, Melanie. I should wear you with the diamond chips. Melanie, come away. You will wear me on your arm someday soon. You wait and see. Is dead. First Claude. Then Cadiz. He realized who'll be next? He wouldn't. Not that he knows the police will be expecting it. He wouldn't take a chance like that. He's a gambler, isn't he? Don't be naive, my dear. He broke no law when he drove Claude to his death, and he broke none when he shot Cadiz. But they're dead. I'm sure he's working out the same kind of legal arrangement for me. In fact, you've got to help. But how? He likes you. I know that. I want you to invite him to the launch of the Baton Rouge tomorrow evening. So you can have him killed? No, Andre, I won't do it. He won't even be harmed. Nothing will happen to him. I have a plan. I merely want to get him out of town. And then I'll be safe. In fact, you've got to help him. You've got to. He won't be harmed. I'll give you my word. Send him a note right now. Right now. I'll dictate for you. What if he doesn't come? He'll come if you ask him. I... Just say, my dear Monsieur Corby, we are launched in the Baton Rouge tomorrow evening with an overnight excursion. It will be the gayest event of the season. With the most prominent members of New Orleans society present, including many of our friends. Does she always dip her pen in perfume? Ladies always do. Or didn't you know? I should personally be honored if you would attend as my guest. Look at her hand. She must have written it with Etienne's dagger. You're wrong about her. She's not like her brother or the rest of them. Rabbits don't have children without long ears. Stop the interruptions, my dove. Yes, my dove. Let me get on with this letter. Ever since that morning, you came to my room. Etc., etc., etc. Go on. It's the acceptors I want to hear. Just the usual thing. She wants me to get to know her better. Patch up the misunderstanding with her brother. Misunderstanding? And get to know a few of her friends. Get to know her. What do you think, Captain? Should I go? 
Or do you want to? You cannot go. I will never speak to you again. You're not going? Yes. Yes, I am going. I'm going to be on the Baton Rouge tonight. And so are you. And you, Josh. Me, Mr. Vance? Just to come, little one, he's our friend. Your friend. Remember, we must not slip. We must not recognize him. You need not worry about that. Ha! There he is, over there. She's pale and skinny. You're not very social this evening, Monsieur Colby. Haven't even asked me to dance. Will you dance? Well. Insist. If you'll excuse me, I see a friend of mine, a client from Madagascar. Welcome to the Baton Rouge, Monsieur Bobby. Uh, merci bien. That girl with Pierre, why is she staring at me? meet anyone the last time you were in Madagascar? Oh, silly. No one's ever been there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Andre! <laughs> Pierre! Monsieur Rivage, <laughs> may I present my friend, Monsieur Antoine Barbie of Madagascar. Uh, pleasure, Monsieur. Oh, pleasure, Monsieur. When you drink coffee, Andre, you only enrich Monsieur Barbie. Oh, uh, oh. And Mademoiselle Melanie Barbie. Mademoiselle. Allow me to present Commissioner Reynard, Monsieur, Monsieur Madame Beauchamp, Madame. Captain O'Hara. Captain, I should be honored if you'd join us for a drink. Ah, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you will excuse me, I'll try my luck at the game. It's a pleasure to have you aboard, Miss Barbie. Indeed, it's charming. The guests is wherever likely to see here. How long have you been in the audience, Miss Lee? Are this trip, you mean? Yes. Oh, I arrived about uh, five days ago. Yes. I always enjoy coming to your charming city. Indeed. Yes. You've been here often before, Mr. Oh, yes. Many, many times. <laughs> I'm delighted you like the boat, Monsieur. I hope we can make some arrangements for transporting your coffin. I shall be most anxious to discuss it tomorrow, perhaps. Excellent. May I have the honor of this dance, Mademoiselle? Who is that man with all those diamonds? The worst card shop on the river, mademoiselle. Card shop, monsieur? Guess guess it. A card shop is a man who cheats at cards. How oh, terrible. But his face is so innocent. He does not look like a cheat. They never do. They never do, mademoiselle. Excuse me, mademoiselle, I'm terribly sorry, but I see that I have some important business I must attend to on the boat. <laughs> I trust you will reserve another dance for me, mademoiselle. If you wish, monsieur. <laughs> will you forgive me? Where was this? Excusez-moi. mademoiselle. <laughs> Went up to his cabin. Is she there? I read her in myself. 
Miss Kevin is on the upper deck. First, I want to invite Monsieur Renard for a stroll on the deck. said someone wanted to see me. Well, I'm someone. You can't stay here in my cabin. You weren't so concerned once before, in the carriage. That was different. You can't stay here now. You're so handsome when you're angry. Get rid of her, Vance. They're trying to compromise you. Who is she? Never mind who I am. I know who you are and what you are. Don't listen to her. She's jealous. I am jealous, Vance. Jealous enough to want you alive. It's a trick. I heard them on the deck. Rivard will be here any minute. If he finds you together, he'll have an excuse to kill you in cold blood. Why, she's insane. I'll get rid of her. Don't you touch her. Yeah, I'll cut you off. You... Get out! Let me go! Monsieur Rivard? Where is she? She? Who? There was a scream in here. Someone called for help. We all heard it. Really? Did you call for help, my dear? We heard nothing. Perhaps it was another cabin. It was in here. No, we've just been sitting here alone. Monsieur Colby has been kind enough to instruct me in 21. And he's a fine instructor. Well, not a card sharp at all. Card sharp? <laughs> Who said I was one? Why, Monsieur Rivage told me, uh, though maybe he was only joking. Were you joking? Captain, this man is a professional gambler. Pull over to the first sandbar and leave him on it. Well, I assume your authority for that order is your one-half ownership in the Baton Rouge. You assume correctly. Yes, well, in that case, I'll have to rescind the order as owner of the other half. We seem to be at an impasse, sir. May I suggest a hand of 21 to see who will own the boat and who will be left on the sandbar? Or don't you wish to lose to a Colby again? All right, you swine. My share against yours. One hand. Cards, please. Mr. Colby deals. Standard. Nineteen. I'll pay twenty. Eighteen. You lose. 
rouge, Monsieur Rivage. The baton rouge is yours. I challenge you to wager the boat on another hand. Against what? Araby. Andre, are you mad? You can't do that. I'll do it. I'll have the boat back. I saw this. Well? All right. The Baton Rouge against your plantation. One hand. One hand. And I'll deal. So good, in fact. I'll give you the advantage of seeing it. Monsieur Rivage. Challenge before record of equipment. Oui, monsieur.
I agreed to help my brother, but I didn't know he meant to kill you. You do believe me, don't you? Yes, I believe you. However, this is for you. Araby? My fight was with your brother, not with you. Besides that, what's a princess without a castle? If anyone ever belonged in Araby, you do. No. No, I belong here. My two partners. <laughs> Au revoir, Vance. Not au revoir. Goodbye. Captain O'Hara is waiting for his sailing orders. Sailing orders. Oh, we oui, weep. Oui. Twice before I saved your life. If you had not come in one more minute, I... I was going to do it once more. I told you one time that three times meant permanent possession. However, I think I'll settle for twice. 